In this video, we're going to continue to see how we can go from Python to Java. This time, our program is going to include conditional execution and user input. So let's start by looking at our Python program, at least our initial one. Uh, it's a program for figuring out what letter grade a student should get based on their average. And for now, we're starting with a fixed average of 85. We're storing that in a variable called AVG. Ultimately, we'll add some user input here, but for now we're using a fixed uh, average. We then have our decision, our conditional execution code, using an if with three elifs and then an else. And if you remember, what happens here is you go from top to bottom evaluating the conditions. As soon as you get one that is true, you execute its block and then you skip all of the rest. So in this case, the first condition is false. 85 is not greater than or equal to 90. So we go and we look at the next condition, the one associated with the first elif, and it is true, 85 is greater than or equal to 80. Therefore, we're going to execute the block associated with that condition, and then we're gonna skip the rest of the decision. So we're not even gonna look at those next two elifs. Instead, we come down to the print statement and we print the result. Now, when we go to Java, we first want to start by making some of the basic changes we talked about in the last video. So simple statements, like assignment statements and print statements, all have to end with semicolons. Notice we don't put semicolons after the um, conditions where we currently have a colon in Python. Typically, if a line has a colon in Python, that's, that means that you're actually in the middle of a compound statement and you don't put a semicolon there in Java. However, we are going to want to make some other changes. So our strings have to all be surrounded by double quotes. We saw last time that when you print, it's system.out.println instead of print, and you need to use concatenation, and you need to add in spaces where needed. We also saw how important it was to declare our variables. So here we have two variables, avg, and uh, in this case, that's a variable that's going to hold an integer. So we're going to declare it to be of type int the very first time we see it. So you can see we have int avg, and then we also can still assign it its initial value. The next variable is grade, and it's being asked to store a string. And so we're going to declare it up here and again, we're preceding the name of the variable with its type, which in this case is capital S string. Okay, so now let's look at conditional execution. The basic structure is the same in Java, but there are some syntax differences. So instead of elif, in Java we write else if. We also surround our conditions with parentheses. That's required in Java. We're also going to have to indicate the blocks differently. This is consistent with what we've seen before. In Python, we have colons after each condition, and that indicates that we're about to begin the block that corresponds to that condition. Uh, in Java, instead of those colons, we're going to put in pairs of curly braces to indicate the beginning and end of the block. So every condition has a block associated with it, as does the else. Each of those blocks is going to be surrounded by curly braces, just like every other block in Java. Now, typically we format it a little differently, or at least I do. So rather than having the else if and the else be on the next line after the closing curly brace, I will typically bring it up on the same line as that preceding curly brace. And um, if I do that for all of them here, I get something that looks like this. And that, to me, allows us to more clearly see that we have one big compound statement here. So that's how I do it. Um, you can do it the other way if you prefer. All right, so those are the syntax changes that we have to make. Otherwise, everything is the same, and it executes the same way it would in Python. So we're again going to get a grade of B here, because the second condition is true, and so we execute its block, and we skip all of the rest of the decision. To run this code, as usual, I've put it in a class. I've called the class grade calculator, and therefore the name of the Java file is gradecalculator.java. And 
you can see that's basically a container for our program. Uh, and then we always need at least the main method using that header that we're just memorizing for now and we're going to explain in more detail later. And then inside that main method we have the code that I showed you earlier. And so if we go ahead and compile this and then run it, you can see that we get 85, which is the value of AVG, and then equals B, which is the grade. Okay, to make the program more useful, we want to be able to get the actual average from the user rather than hard coding in a particular number. So in Python, we would do that using uh, an input function call, and then we would take what input gives us back, which is a string, and we would convert it to an int. And so the combination of input followed by int allows us to get an integer from the user, which we store in the variable. In Java, it's a little bit more complicated. We actually have to start by creating a special kind of object known as a scanner object, and that's what this line of code is doing. If we look more closely at what's happening, we're using the constructor for the scanner class to create a scanner object. I'm passing into that constructor this special value, system.in, that is built into Java, and it allows us to tell the scanner that we want it to read from the keyboard, from the console. We're then taking the object that the constructor gives us and storing it in a variable that I've called scan, the actual variable name doesn't matter. And then like any other variable in Java, we have to declare it the first time that we use it, and or the first time that we see it, and I'm doing that right here. Its type is also scanner. And, and we saw this in Python as well. The name of the constructor is the same as the name of the data type. So in this case, the name of the data type is scanner. Once we have our scanner object, we can then use it to get user input. And so down here where we used to have the 85, I'm going to replace that with a method call to a method called nextInt. And nextInt is inside the scanner object. It's a method that belongs to that scanner object. Uh, and so that's why I'm prepending the scanner object. So it's scan.nextInt. That's going to pause, wait for the user to enter something, and then it's going to give us back the integer that the user enters, which I'm storing in AVG. Now I also want to have a prompt for the user, so I do that before I call nextInt. I do that as a separate uh, statement, a println statement. In Python, you can put the prompt when you call input, but you cannot do that in Java. And scanners have other methods inside them too. So we used the nextInt method. So if scan is our scanner object, scan.nextInt reads in an integer and returns it as we saw. Scan.nextDouble reads in a floating point value, one that has a decimal in it, and returns it as a double. Scan.next reads in a single word, a single sequence of characters that are not spaces or other types of white space characters uh, and returns it as a string object. And then scan.nextline allows us to read in an entire line of input where there could be multiple words and return that entire thing as one big string. Returning to our program, one other thing we typically want to do is print a prompt for the user. In Python, you put the prompt in the call to input but in Java you just print it before using the scanner to get the input. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put in those new lines for getting the user's input. We're going to see we need two more changes though. So first of all, when I go to compile this, you'll see we get an error message. And it's again a cannot find symbol error message. But this time the thing it can't find is the class scanner. So it's not a variable, it's a class that it can't find. And that's because the scanner class is in a separate package, which is a collection of classes that Java comes with. It has a bunch of different packages. And we have to come up here before the class and import that package. It's called the java.util package. And so we're going to import it like this. Import java.util.asterisk 
semicolon. And now we're telling the compiler where to find the scanner class. So if I save this and compile, you'll see that error goes away. Okay, so now we're ready to run it, but we'll see it doesn't look exactly the way we probably want it to look because it prints the prompt, but then the box for the user's input is underneath. So it works. If I put in 85, it tells me it's B. Uh, if I run it again, and if I put in 65 this time, it tells me it's D. But to get things to be on the same line here, to get the prompt to be followed by the box, I need to change println to just print. And then it won't print a new line after the string that I'm asking it to print. It'll stay on the same line, and therefore the box will show up right after the prompt. So if I recompile and rerun, you can see this time the box is right after the prompt. And so if I tell it 65, I again get D.